Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. Today I'm gonna to show you how to code, diagnose, and replace one of these injectors on a modern BMW. So that's an N20, but this particular DIY isn't gonna be really specific to an F30 chassis or whatnot. It will apply to the N55, a whole bunch of BMW. So basically, if you have a newer style injector like this on any BMW, even on E90s, etc., this guide will help you. So here's the situation. That's a cold start. As you can see, I have a check engine light. Runs fine otherwise though. Just using a generic scan tool here. So I got one pending fault and one permanent fault. P0172, P0172 pending, meaning the issue is unresolved. P0172 PE, I believe that's just previously stored. But regardless, it's an ongoing issue. If I were to clear the code, the car would stall when it's doing its auto start stop and it would run a little bit rough uh, when you first reset the code until the car can somewhat adapt. On this car, there's only one bank two, which is the whole four cylinder head. On some cars, you'd have bank one, bank two, depending on if it's a six cylinder, maybe cylinders one to three or four to six. When you have a code and the car is running rich, it will actually, in my opinion, go outside the typical short-term and long-term parameters to at least keep it running. Whereas under normal circumstances, there's only so much fuel it can pull before it has to trigger a code. So the car actually runs fine right now, but it's not emissions compliant. And if I were to reset the code, it would run rough. So one way to go about it, an easy way, if you don't have a laptop and you're just trying to get a rough idea of what's going on, it's probably gonna be just one injector. And for this video, I only ordered one just to see if I can get away with the one and see how that all plays out. But what you'd wanna do is clear the code with a generic scan tool. And after you've cleared it, pull the spark plugs. Let it idle for like a minute or so, stumble and run rough, but don't let the plug clean itself out. Pull the engine cover, take out the spark plug, and take a look at it. But one of them will be a lot blacker than the other. But let's see if we can use a laptop to figure this out at this point. And by the way, I took this car on a long road trip to California and back. It ran flawless. But what I noticed is when I got off the highway, when I just got home, I had my borderline first stall situation. So it probably was the long trip that took out the injector and caused one of them to leak, aka always dumping in more fuel than is necessary and making the whole bank rich. I'm loading up ISTA, going to operations. Read out vehicle data, complete identification. You may have a code pointing to the injector just by itself. Display fault memory. So we have fuel air mixture too rich. Start, stop, haul, effect sensor, incorrect position. That's probably when it was stalling. I got some stuff just from doing work on this car, unplugging the fuel tank and whatnot. But really it's the mixture control too rich without any other indicators that I'm seeing here for the DME. So there's nothing saying, hey, injector number, whatever is seeming to have an issue. Can't really tell. So I was looking for a smoothness test on ISTA to see if maybe one cylinder was contributing less. I don't think that would even be the case at this point considering uh, the check engine light is triggered and the engine is running smooth. So nothing really revolutionary in terms of a module to help you diagnose with ISTA. You're gonna need it to program the injectors regardless. In terms of seeing cylinder contribution and whatnot as a module in here, I didn't find anything. All right, so now the plan of action is pull the laptop out of the way, use my generic scan tool to clear the code, and then I'm going to start the car up before it can trigger a new check engine light and it's running rough. We'll let it run and until it's trying to smooth itself out and then shut it off so we can see which spark plug looks the most fouled. See, I believe that code, the PE code, won't clear until it sees the issues permanently fixed. So it will trigger that light a lot easier and be ready to compensate um, because it's a stored code that will only really clear if you can prove that the issue is fixed with metrics. But if I start the car now, it should trigger the light pretty quickly because it's kind of on high alert with that PE code. So I'm gonna start it, we'll see how it runs, and I wanna shut it off before it can trigger the light and clean up the plugs. I think I could get some heat into the engine, drive it around for a bit and see if I can get that injector to act up. And then once it's acting up and triggers the code, I'll come back, shut it off, clear the code and do a restart when it's in that situation. And then it should uh, make a difference. Let's see if it'll come right back after that. I have a theory that heat soak is what causes the injector to finally start dumping in more fuel than it should. Because I noticed if you leave the car idling for an extended period of time, like in a drive through for a long time, you'll probably trigger it at that time when the heat soak gets to the engine. So to start with, I'm gonna pull the cover. Let's take a look at the spark plug, see if one is obviously rich. And then also we'll try to, if we see something that looks a little off, I will put my heat gun to the injectors and just see if one of them starts to act up. Pulling the vacuum lines off the valve cover. So 
So that's cylinder one. It doesn't look like it's fouled out from running rich or anything. We'll see how the other one looks. The electrodes look fine. Cylinder two, cylinder three, cylinder four. Okay, so for now, there's nothing obvious, but it could be cylinder three, just by getting a rough idea on those. They may have cleaned themselves out after the code triggered. It could be an intermittent problem. So I'm gonna put the plugs back in and try to heat up the injectors of the heat gun just to see if we can trigger the situation. I have some nearly new Eldor coils that I'm gonna put in. I don't know if it's required, but I just ran a vacuum line across there instead of going into that reservoir just so there's no leak. So I introduced some heat into injector number one, about 30 seconds of the gun on maximum heat, but half fan. So now I'll move to the next injector and see if just with a bit of heat, all of a sudden it starts to stumble or run rough. Okay, I just got a pending code after doing that and I'm gonna pull the spark plugs now. One of them should look a little bit more rough than the rest, hopefully, let's see. I came to a realization and a general recommendation. Based on the evidence I saw from the car and the computer and based on the condition of the spark plugs, I believe that these cars are really tuned to run efficient and they're not like the older generation cars where um, you'd see a back spark plug before it would detect that there's a problem. I think it's cylinder number three, but they're all super noisy. And then from what I understand, they either revise the design of the injector or with age, they get noisy and clicky. If you're gonna attempt this, if you're getting a P0172 code, it could be something along the lines of your math and air or your air filter, that kind of stuff. But really 90% of the time it's the injectors. I was hoping that I could either find something in ISTA to show like a rough running or smooth running test to see if maybe one cylinder is contributing less. It's just barely out of range. The car doesn't smell rich. There's no black soot out of the tailpipe. It's not a six cylinder where where you can maybe do the first three or the last three, do the bank based on whatever oxygen sensors showing rich. The whole thing is banked too because it's a four cylinder, it only has one primary wideband upstream sensor. So that means you're pretty much stuck with doing all four or if it's very obvious, you may get away with one or two. You'd have to wait for that code to get worse and for the injector to fail more and for the car to start truly misfiring. If you look, these engines are very expensive for two reasons. It's either the timing chain that's uh, gonna go or they lose like a cylinder. They have a complete failure of one of the cylinders, ring lands break, whatever. I believe if you let this thing go all the way, you're gonna potentially risk losing a cylinder. You don't wanna get to the point where it would misfire the cylinder, it means you've put in so much extra fuel into the oil that it could spin a bearing from thinning out the oil, et cetera, et cetera. If you pull your plugs and they just look like they're a little bit off, so if you have an N55, S55, N20, N26 with this style injector and you're getting a rich code that keeps reoccurring nothing else, no other accompanying codes, I'd probably recommend that you just replace all the injectors or at least on an MT5, do the three because you can know which bank is bad, especially because these are still a problem. On the N54, the injectors would fail and be very costly. These are cheaper to replace, but it seems like after about a hundred and some odd thousand, maybe 120 to 140, they will go and they can cause a big problem. It can damage the motor if you don't change them proactively before uh, they completely fail. You can't just ignore that code, I believe. Now it's gonna be a full injector DIY where we'll install these new injectors, all four of them, and then code the injectors. All right, that's the part number for the replacement injector for an EU5 car. It just fits on the N20, N26, N55 early cars up until I believe July 2020, and then they switch to EU6, I could be wrong. You could follow this procedure if you have an N55 or an N26 or N20. All right, let's get it unboxed. You will have to buy an injector decoupler. And here's the injector itself. The new one comes with a new seal. To do this, I bought the following kit off Amazon. This was $25. So I've got a rag ready, grabbing a 17 to release the pressure from the high pressure fuel pump. Sat overnight, so it probably doesn't even have any buildup. So be ready. There's limited fuel coming out of there, so we're good. Now we're using a 14 to crack these loose. The bracket design allows for it to be supported. You don't really have to hold the other side of the injector based on this design. Now we're gonna crack these E8 bolts loose. Now we'll rotate this up and out of the way. All right, so now we're gonna go after this eight mil ground for the coils on top. Careful, this could easily drop in. We have this. It's a good opportunity to disconnect the injectors. I'm putting a pick tool on the side and then pulling straight up. 
We can get all this wiring right out of the way. And we'll take this 10 stud out. Take these out. Seems like they only go one way. But if you see the other side, so it looks like green side down, there's a little dot. Now I'm bringing over this tool. It's got these little spacers that you're gonna have to put in place first. Get these threaded on. So those threaded in smoothly, that's a good sign. I understand most of you guys won't have a 24 wrench. I bought it just because it's come up on a few occasions where it'd be a nice one to have. You could use a adjustable wrench. Basically thread these in. Because they're reverse threaded, they'll draw the injector up. That pop free, and this pop free. Pretty abrupt, actually. When I did this on the N54, I could actually use a pick tool and pull the injector out, but I think they designed it a little bit better now, so you really would need a tool like that, I believe. So pulling out cylinder three. I was suspicious of this one. And when you look at the two, it is a little bit darker than the rest for what it's worth. The other ones have more of a brownish silver tip. The new injector doesn't come with a compression sleeve over this. I think they expect you to use the tool to install it just to get it back into place. If you have the sleeves that would normally go over the end of the injector for an N54, you could probably compress it. Start with, I'm gonna put the decoupler on. So take this off, bring the piece over with the, the washer side toward the injector, and then you just snap it on. The next step is going to be to note down the calibration number if you see right here. The other injector says 060, that was kind of like a generation code. This is the calibration number 310 and each injector will have a different calibration number. So I'm going to note that down and then stick it in the cylinder and move on to the next one. Basically to get these secured back in the head, you're just going to use the hold down brackets. Cylinder 2 is 230. Make sure the green dot is down when you're reinstalling these brackets. Torquing these to 10 newton meters. I'm gonna clear all the codes to start. I'm deleting all the fault memory to start with. Now we're going to go to vehicle management, service functions. So we'll go to powertrain, engine electronics, adjustment function. Over here on the right, we're going to go over to injection quantity compensation. Now we'll hit continue. It's showing what's currently there. We'll hit continue. It's saying should adjustment values from a replaced engine controller be applied. We'll click on no. So we'll click on enter new adjustment values. So we're going to say cylinder one, continue. And it wants us to enter the new value, which was 310. Hit continue. Our other values to be entered, we're gonna click yes. Cylinder two, which is 230. Another value to adjust, yes. Okay, so we've done all of them now, and now we can say no. And it wants us to verify what we put in, 310, 230, 236, 282. That looks good to me. Click yes. Okay. Adjustment values stored in the engine control unit are such. Click continue. So they look good. So now we're gonna close this out. And we're going to go to delete adaptations. Reset all adaptation values except those for the increment wheel. So we'll continue the service function. The following is carried out automatically. It's turning off the ignition. Turning on the ignition. Reset all adaptation values. So we click continue. And setting the values. So we can close this out, shut the ignition off, let the car rest for a bit, turn it back on, let it run for two minutes and see how it, the injector sound and how it runs. So right when I was pulling the car out of the driveway, it developed a misfire cylinder too. I actually threw a set of new plugs at it just because I might as well have new plugs given the mileage, new Eldor coils and fresh injectors just so there's one less thing to worry about even if this goes to the next owner, etc. I actually look at a couple other DIYs. I typically skip through them just to see if there's anything I'd like to add to what I'm seeing. What I noticed is people were either using the tool to remove the injector to put the new ones in 
or they were using the bracket to shove it down into the head. Seems like even reputable places were doing that and, and you know what, I, I kind of got a false sense of confidence thinking there's something different about these seals, especially since they don't come with a sleeve that keeps the seal compressed, but really that's not the case at all, that's not right. Here's an N54 injector, and if you notice the N55 or N20, S55 injector, etc., has a bigger seal, but otherwise these are the same size. If I were to put a caliper on the N54 injector, 7.3, or they're close to being the same size, 7.1. It would appear as though they made the seal a little bit longer, probably just for better surface area. The thing is, I even own the tool that I should have used here to ensure that they'll go in the head smoothly. You're supposed to use these various stages of compression. I hope this is enough. Uh, I believe it would be enough. So what I'm used to doing is using one of these sleeves to slide over the injector to compress the new seal. Uh, when you buy N54 injectors brand new, for instance, they're completely compressed and you have about five minutes once you slide the sleeve off. For whatever reason, these N20 injectors come with no sleeve on there, so you have to use a tool like this. They still sell a tool, BMW does, to be used to install those injectors. I guess it was a cost-saving measure. If you guys are gonna do this DIY properly, completely compress that seal, and then you should be able to almost insert it purely by hand all the way down, uh, and then you could rely on the bracket to finally seat them. But using the removal tool to push them back into the head will score the seal, or using the bracket even. If you have to kind of just lay the bracket and have it push the injector into place, you risk scoring the seal depending on if there's any grit down there, etc. So I'm gonna remove my number two injector to see if it looks like it's scored up and if I'm leaking compression. So that's how the seal looks on my number two injector. As you can see, it got scored up and chewed up, probably because maybe a little bit of sand debris uh, went past this, which is not good. But regardless though, that's not the way to do it. All the guides you're gonna find online are pretty much gonna just basically show them shoving it into the head. There's a chance of this happening. So compression tool is recommended here. Okay, so I blew some compressed air in there. I saw like tiny little particles of sand that's kind of on the walls that could have easily marred up that injector seal. So I blew it all out. From the DIYs I've seen, nobody's really saying, hey, by the way, these injectors don't come with a sleeve. Don't just assume you can slide them in without compressing them first. They do make a tool for it, buy the tool. So that'll be linked below as well as for the injectors themselves. That way, if you're gonna do this, you'll do it properly. I picked up some injector seals. I figured it's always good to have a couple extra on hand. So I ended up just using the seal compressor that I already had for the N54 and it worked perfectly fine. Main thing is compress it. I put a tiny bit of gasoline around the seal just to help it slide in for some slight lubrication just on initial. And I wasn't able to bottom it out by hand. The bracket it did very gently just nudge it into place and then I let it sit for a while for that seal to expand and all was well. I'll start it up so you can hear it now. Actually starts really nice. So the injectors are a little quieter than before but not as quiet as you'd probably think. So just open the exhaust valve. The injectors are about as loud as they'll ever get and they're definitely much quieter now. So that's one added perk. FYI that's the fuel injector seal compression tool that I have. So I think the biggest thing is I had some grit that was surrounding the injector that may have gotten gummed up or around the hole where the seal would go and it scored it when I was installing it. So if you take extra care, put some brake clean in there and then compressed air to blow out any debris, take a look, you'll see if it's crystal clean and then compress the seal slightly before you insert it and you should be in good shape. You just use the bracket to push it home. I'm glad I made this DIY because it catches something that's pretty important. Don't just shove them in without taking care to make sure it's clean and compress the seal ahead of time. So that shows you how to repair your fuel injectors on a BMW, pretty much all modern BMWs. If this is the first video you're catching on mine, please consider subscribing, I upload regularly. And if you liked it, give it a like so it'll rank higher. Thanks for watching.